What do we have from our audience online inshaAllah? <clears throat> As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Alaikum As Salaam Ramtala Sayyidi, what's the connection or significance of the Rabb in Rabbi Al Awwal and Miladun Nabi? Yeah, I don't think you asked that on the other night. <laughs> yeah. It's a nice, but I think it's, it's, it has a different uh, sort of understanding, Rabbi. But uh, yeah, the first Lord, if you want to translate uh, literally, so alhamdulillah. Those are nice uh, sort of things that you put together. But uh, definitely Prophet then has an immense importance on the, the th third lunar month <coughs> and the twelfth day. So this is an immense reality that it's not a, uh, something that didn't happen or happen randomly, Allah has everything written in an eternal reality. And we said the celebration of Prophet is the, the birth of creation, that all creation comes into existence from Nur Muhammad When that took place and in what reality? Not understood. So what we do as a contribution towards that reality is that the celebration of Rabbi al Awwal is the celebration of Ya Rabbi not only bringing the physical reality of the Sultan onto this earth and honouring the earth and honouring ourselves and our descendants to participate, to be from the nation, to be in the proximity of this Sultan's holy presence. Imagine then the reality of the soul and the birth of that soul when Allah kun fayakun wanted to be known and brought into existence Muhammadun Rasulullah Immensity of that is what you're getting from the celebration of Minad al-Nabi Not only physicality because people try to minimize, okay was he, was this, this was it but there is nothing to minimize. But the extent of understanding Milad al-Nabi is look to the eternal reality of the existence of Muhammadun Rasulullah Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. When Allah is a hidden treasure wanting to be known and wrote Muhammadun Rasulullah and everything came into existence. All the angels came into existence, all the heavens came into existence, all the planets and universes, all the holy things that we can imagine came into existence from the reality of Muhammadun Rasulullah that's the celebration of Milad al-Nabi And that's why the celebration of it has such an opening upon the soul, such a removal of difficulty upon the soul, such, such a celebration from the time we celebrate into the grave and into Yawm al Masha to be raised. That these people are raised of the celebration of Sayyidina Muhammad with what angels and with what lights. Allah dresses and accompanies their soul to magnify and beautify the reality of Prophet Because Allah all will want to show the immense reality of Muhammadun Rasulullah So on Day of Judgment people ask, what are these, who are these, what are these lights that these people have? 
So these are the people who celebrated the birth of Prophet with love and respect. So these are immense, immense eating the food of the Milad al Nabi that's three times a week. Put your food out, put drink out as soon as the celebrations and the zikrs begin. Each of the food of the Milad al Nabi is immense shifa, immense healing for people and their loved ones and their, their the ones whom are well and sick. If you're sick it's a shifa healing to take away sicknesses and sicknesses of the heart and if you're well it's a intercession upon the soul to give the barakah and the blessings upon the soul inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa uh, Does listening to dua Ayatul Kursi affect the hearing of the student? It has a barakah to listen to the dua Ayatul Kursi and meditate and contemplate and then ask that Allah include you in that blessing that, oh I can't recite like they recite so Ya Rabbi let me to be dressed from its recitation. And then you take the words from the app and recite along as the recording is reciting. So one you can just listen and have it playing in the house for other spiritual beings to listen. Those that are of a bad nature they can't, they can't hold their listening, that's why it has power. All the zikrs, all of the salawats, these nefarious beings they cannot not listen. They can't put headphones to block sound. So as soon as you play sounds and frequencies because they're not of a physical nature, every sound has a vibration and their whole existence is based on vibrations. So you're sending lasers that are burning them, they can't shield themselves because we're a physical matter. When you think you want to block a sound out you basically block through your, ear, your hearing, when they're spiritual every vibration is coming towards them. So when the sound begins to emanate it creates vibrations, colors, rhythms and, and frequencies, those frequencies burn them. There's, they have no defense against it as a result that's why I qul jal haq, tell them when the truth comes falsehood will go and falsehood perishes. So means when these truths come out they run. If they stay they perish. Very important if you're watching the news they're showing all of these what they call do, direct energy weaponry in which they're firing energy from the sky, lasers from the sky and burning what they want to burn through these lasers. We said the time is coming for energy and energy understanding, so where are all the people who don't like to talk about energy? You, you think the dajjal cares you like or you don't like to talk about energy, you want to talk everything physical? But what's important is to understand is what dajjal is planning. When his weaponry is going to come based on energy, well you better be training based on energy and how to cast your own energy. When they have to go up into the sky and send the laser down, what does that look like to you? Anytime you have to receive a support from above that's a madad. Why are they going into the sky to burn something down? Means they want to send a support from a device they have in the skies to send down. This is the same understanding for madad that you need a support that you don't have and you have to have the support of what Allah had from the men of God whom they're authorized in the sama filat. That their authority is in the world of light and in the world of form. So more than ever we make the understanding of our madad and our connection. That wherever you are it's like satellite planes, only are more powerful than their planes and satellites. That as soon as we ask for madad and support their energy is coming in an instant into the heart of the believer. And only they can come to shield us against any type of attack like that. For if shaitan plans to use that 
type of weaponry against those whom Allah has guarded and protected, it's only through that madad and support that they come and they provide a shield against that in which that laser won't burn. So then they try to show their science and they show, oh, look the laser can be programmed to burn specific color frequencies, right? So they'll shine it on red, it burns, yellow it burns and that's just by programming. They'll program it to not burn blue and then they'll put it on blue and it doesn't burn. But that's programmable, so they'll use that device also for healing. They can burn a cancer by putting a dye into the body and this dye will be a specific color attaches to all the cancer and through a beam on the outside laser it really shines on the body. It doesn't burn the color of the flesh, the bone or the meat. It specifically targets the color that was attached to the cancer. And they have the laser and just burn everything that they didn't want. So means all of these realities are coming. All of these realities are based on sound and energy and frequency. And Islam has to be supreme. Islam's understanding has to be supreme and this was madad, this was the connection, this was the energy. That if you have to go to a device to do that, well then du'a does that if they're connected. When they connect with Prophet when they connect with only Allah then they're making du'a, they're asking to do healing, what's happening? Then heavenly lasers are coming and these energies are coming and destroying anything that Allah wants destroyed. So means all of these technologies are going to be showing deep, deep realities in spirituality. But people will believe the technology more because they can see and touch it. But Allah created us as very powerful beings and all we have to do is unlock the heart, make the connection to receive those realities, inshaAllah. Sayyidi, that was the next question. How to protect mm -hmm. ourselves? As Salaamu Sayyidi, a lot of talk about high powered energy weapons and laser technology causing massive harm. How to protect ourselves from it? The madad making the connection. One is to believe in energy, its use and, and its application. So this we talked of many years ago, now it's just now coming out and they're using it for nefarious purposes later be used for medical purposes. But the main thing is it should give the believers more understanding in their spiritual practices, how to bring a, a heavenly energy that is a power from the heavens that not relying on power from the earth. And that which you can connect to the heavens already has powers of the earth. And that's why then the study of this reality, meditating, contemplating, connecting the heart is all of those realities. And when Allah wants to protect the believer against these very bad sort of actions of dajjal then it's going to require the madad in which they make their madad and spiritual beings come and they shield people from this weaponry and from this type of uh, energies. They have microwave energies that they just come outside from a vehicle and direct the energy towards the home and start to cook people. So all of these things are coming in which a child of five hair will turn grey. So it's not something understood by people nor seen by people but its preparation is in the madad, in the connection to Prophet is the sultan. So to be connected to the sultan and to receive uh, authority from the sultan this is uh, our life's goal. But people need motivation so they wait and wait and wait and wait until that laser is burning their feet then they're going to sit and decide that, okay now I'm going to make my connection, now I'm going to get my taweez, I'm going to be ready because they're reactive and not proactive. Right, the audience on the outside saying, no, 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 they're making fun of these types of energy talks, they're reactive people. 
when the energy start hitting their rooftop and their feet and their homes then they become proactive people and start listening, so what was the guy, what was the guy saying about these things, about this, about that. So it, it, once it becomes more evident and self-evident then people will understand. So now they use colors as a shield, right? So certain roofs had a certain color and they didn't burn. Everything else around it burned. Well that's like the understanding of a ta'weez when Allah is, is giving a, a much higher, you don't need a color if you have this ta'weez nothing going to burn because that has its energy and it understands what's being sent and would defend the believer against these difficulties, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. So what is the best way to improve the practice of contemplation? Writing the notes and connecting brings a lot of energy but still can't seem to make the connection well. Keep trying, give charity, be charitable. It takes away and washes away sins and difficulties. Uh, do khidmat and go out and serve and, and feed people and every day consistently connect. And never in the busy daytime or in the middle of your busy calls and busy life, it's always late at night. After everybody's going to sleep you sit and make a little bit of your connection or you go to bed early, wake up early for fajr so that you have your strong tea, strong uh, coffees and teas, praying your fajr alert and connecting your heart. So either way has to be when the signal is off by people. In the busy day sitting and saying, yeah I'm trying to meditate, I can't meditate, yeah of course it's not going to work at all, there's no, there's no activity allowed at that time. Allah said, we created a day for your work. So means that's the time in which you're supposed to be working and making your rizq. But the night time in which people are sleeping and you put aside the time of your bed to worship Allah and connect, then there's a lot of power because nobody's using the circuitry at night, you know like a clear energy coming out. But during the day it's very, very heavy traffic, so much uh, you know dunya, there's no connection at the day and that's not the time to make your connection and practice, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam. Um, to ask if during writing these teachings and if we're inspired with some Qur'anic verses that come to heart, is it okay to add to the notes? Yeah, anytime you're taking the notes, you're writing and then you put into brackets your notes, what's coming into your heart and some understanding. Don't put it into the whole talk because when you go back to read it, it became a part of the talk which you could have been wrong in your inspiration. So take the talk and then you'll come back and repeat it in a question to me, say, is it true that uh, they're all in charge of all, all water and then, yeah. Then they start to misquote and that's dangerous because you talk to other people and say, yeah the shaykh said he can walk through walls. No, that was your in interpretation of, of this or that. So try to do the talks clean and any understanding that you think you have you put in like brackets or parentheses. That, oh, this is coming in my heart to this, 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 this and no problem. Then at least you know those are your words, not the shaykh's words that could be misquoted later, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa uh, Are the Ashab in Ashab al Kahf actually the seven attributes of the holy face? They're linked to the seven attributes of the holy face. So they represent the, the holy face upon this earth and that there are seven diamonds. So they take from the power of these diamonds that are, are hidden upon the earth in which Mawlana Shaykh described. And each diamond has the face of Sayyidina Jibreel So then they're a sign to be in the proximity of that diamond and they receive its fires and its energy. But in reality there are seven diamonds. So these are seven energy points. That's why then the importance of the love of Sayyidina Mahdi 
the love of Ahlul Bayt is that you're, you're trying to gain access to the cave and the lion that guarding that cave because you can't go from the other side, there's no other side of the cave, there's only one entry point on this cave. And the lion of that cave is Sayyidina Mahdi So means then we have to be good with Ahlul Bayt and, and ask for their, their love, their guidance and only through their authority they allow us into that deep reality and, and to be under their nazar and to be Mahdiyoon in which they are the Muhammadan guides, inshaAllah. Kamileen wa Mahdeen. As Salaamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh Ya Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaamu Alaikum wa Barakatuh Ya Shaykh, can you please explain the difference between tafakkur and rabita? What's the difference? Tafakkur is the whole science, rabita is the five minute of making the connection. Rabbit the Sharif, when we say in the zikr, Rabbit the Sharif is that we're asking to connect to the shaykh. Tafakkur is a whole science of how to do that. So it's assumed that you studied tafakkur so that you can make the noble connection. Rabbit the Sharif is to make the noble connection. Saying it is nice but you didn't get there just by saying it. It's like saying, I'm a mu'min but you're not a mu'min until Allah determines you're a mu'min. So you don't… can't just say something and, and be there. So Rabbit al-Sharif made… make the noble connection to the chain. Tafakkur is the whole science of how to contemplate. What do you do with your hands? What do you do with your feet? What do you do with your body? What do you do with your breath? What are your ears supposed to be doing? What are your eyes supposed to be doing? How are you supposed to be breathing? The whole science of that reality. So the student is supposed to be studying all of Islamic knowledges and at the end the shaykhs would sit down and begin to teach them contemplation and tafakkur in which Prophet says, the one whom truly mastered and reached to tafakkur it's as if 70 years of worship of other people. So one hour of tafakkur is equivalent to 70 years of worship of other people because Prophet was giving them a status. This is not an easy process. These people of tafakkur, one hour of their contemplation is the equivalent of your 70 years of life. Means what? One hour they accomplish more than what people accomplish in a lifetime because at that time 70 years was the maximum life span of a person. So means and that was a tremendous insignificant Prophet was putting upon tafakkur. So we imagine telling the, con con the holy companions that this one hour of this individual is like a whole lifetime of somebody else. But well, they would have been eager to understand, well how, how do we do that? And hence all of the spiritual realities opened up. Sayyidina Abu Hurairah described that if I teach I had two knowledges from Prophet One I spoke, one if I told the companions they would cut my head. Well how was that attained? Through the tafakkur and contemplation. So means then the whole science of tafakkur and contemplation then was deep with the holy companions. How to meditate, how to contemplate, how to connect their hearts, everything. And that then tradition is being passed down through the tariqahs, Naqshbandiyatul Aliyah which is the soul of all other tariqahs. And their secret, Naqshbandi's secret is knowledge from the heart of Prophet Different than Rifai and Qadri and everything else, Naqshbandiyah is the soul of all tariqahs and their, their uloom is their karama, their miracle. Not the walking, not the cutting, not anything else, not flying. Their miracle is, is knowledge from the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad As Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah Sayyidi, my father passed away this year. Uh, one of his friends is spiritual, he came into my office 
He came into my house while I was in the office and said to my family that, to, that your father contacted me and asked me to send this message that he is in pain and someone is not forgiving him from his, her heart. Therefore, make sadaqa uh, for your father. Please, Sayyidi, I was disturbed after listening to all this from my family. Chalo, make sadaqa. That you don't even need to be told that somebody else had to have a dream to tell you, that you make a well in their name, you do maulid in their name. That's why we keep talking about dedication, that the people have so many things to dedicate. You get a qurban, dedicate to the life of your children. People don't have anything to, to, to dedicate to when you, when you say, okay, well why do I have to make a will, why, why wouldn't you make a water well? Make it to the life of your children that Allah never give them a day of when they have thirst. Don't always assume everything will be great because you're around but a day that you're not around that Ya Rabbi make this be a source of water for them that they never have a, a pain of thirst or take away any type of sickness with qurban. So all of the charities and all of these projects are meant to take away difficulties, dedication most important. Because it becomes a jariya for the person in difficulty or not even in difficulty. People have attained uh, very high stations, people whom their families were not Muslim, they dedicated wells, they did things for Mawlid and they emailed that they had uh, very beatific dreams of their relatives uh, in the presence of Prophet and uh, accompanying awliya. So this, this is a, a path that has no limit. There's no limit in what Allah's rahmah and mercy can do for someone. The only limit is that people's brain and their nafs when they think their money will finish if they do a well and that's from shaitan playing with them where nothing, nothing ever finishes. Every time you put a well and every time a cup of water or, or something is, is reaches somebody's lips Allah is sending sustenance to the soul of that individual. So means this is a, a way of faith. So for all loved ones, for children to be protected from uh, relatives that passed, you celebrate the mauli, dedicate uh, uh, donations towards the Milad and Nabi for the intercession of Sayyidina Muhammad and that's between you and your Lord. You're going and say, Ya Rabbi for the sake of this donation, Ya Sayyidi Ya Rasulul Kareem please intercede for them that watch over them and their nazar, guide them, grant them faith as you grant it to me, grant them the love for you as you grant it to me. Means this is your relationship with Allah with Prophet but then you have to provide the action. The charity is the way to provide the action, the du'a is between you and your Lord. But the people who continuously make du'a and give nothing with it is garbage, you're wasting everybody's time. That's not, that's not good, that's not the way of faith. And we saw for Mawlana Shaykh they will come to making du'a and they don't give anything in the way of that du'a. So what are you trying to show Allah You don't believe anything? It's just because it's free and it's cheap I just keep asking. But it's not like that, everything has to be verifiable like a stamp with a signature. And you go to the bank and you get it certified and means this is real. So, Ya Rabbi please take away this difficulty for the love of Prophet I'm giving this donation and take away this difficulty, guide them as you guided me with light and love. So means every time they make a du'a there's an action that verifies what they just did. Should make sense right like smart contracts and all of these digital things. But if you, you don't have anything that verifies what you just believed in. So that's why we call it faith in action. Go out and give a hamburger, go out and get a sandwich from a grocery store, whole bunch of bread and some, some uh, sandwich meat, make something, make your du'a and go out and give it so that your faith is real. Allah then now there's a transaction that took place, right? Because you showed it's real, you provided an action, now wait for Allah to give you a reaction. But if you don't provide an action, why Allah would give you a reaction? What's the common sense? So oh, holy companions they didn't… Oh, holy companions were giving their life two times a day. 
fighting till the death, no life insurance for their family, nothing. No one to take care of the children, nothing. And if they survived they went to the next fight. And if they survived they went to the next fight. What could be better charity? They didn't have to give ten dollars from their pocket, they were giving their lives for Prophet and for Allah So we can't even compare with that reality. But our lives then to make everything in our life real, faith and action. We want then we provide the action of it inshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha. As Salaamu Alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. As Alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.